All right, so sorry for not making a video yesterday. I had a busy weekend of racing. But anyway, stage 14, the first time ever Nepal look, has looked in danger. We're going to go through some watts. We're going to go through some watts today. Lost more time today as well. But to be honest, not too catastrophic. And as everyone says, the third week is not too hard. Um, so, well, for tomorrow, for sorry, for yesterday's stage, we're going to look at both Ben O'Connor's and Team Aronsman. Team Aronsman um, was actually the quickest on the day, 22.41, three seconds quicker uh, then Evan Nepal. Now you can see um, pretty impressive numbers. 6.3 for 22 minutes on the Pandera, which is strong. And generally people say that his power meter reads quite well, but you can see he did 5.4 before. So if you sort of whack it all together, it's like 5.6 for an hour, which is big. Obviously that's from the average normalizers, more like 5.8 for 53 minutes, which is a pretty large, considering sort of like the end of the week, obviously you're far away from the rest day and not the second week as well. Like the stage, okay, wasn't, was was hard as well because i'm pretty sure he's in the break like correct me if i'm wrong but i'm pretty sure he's in the break so like that is pretty impressive if you look at ben o'connor's for example um if we look at some of his numbers uh wait sorry what's happened here what's happened here is there's been a lack of watts i'm pretty sure he has power up there on this one okay maybe he doesn't have power there um but anyway you can see like in the bunch well to be fair the bunch is quite hard as well um 340 normalized as well so a pretty tough stage to be honest and numbers actually looked pretty good from team announcement obviously won today's stage but hasn't uploaded um but remco yeah not great from him but like the level is pretty high like 6.2 is is decent like that is high people are saying about his cadence well obviously on strava we can i'm pretty sure he posts his cadence so we could we can have a look at his cadence which is obviously an interesting point because people were saying maybe he didn't have the 32 cassette maybe he had you know this maybe at that i think it's realistic he probably just got injured but you can see here is cadence 92 like i don't think that's significantly lower than you think okay there's bits here that are 70 but it's still like a 20k an hour climb like even this steep part here is still 14k an hour 87 cadence average so i wouldn't say the cadence is the issue i reckon he's just crashed and not feeling top after the crash but today he did a lot better um he obviously like if we go over today's stage team and aronsman won from the break what a king uh did make a video on him actually earlier this year saying he was gonna be a legend because just look at his power day, he's doing six and a half, which is like 440 at his weight. And you're like, that is like equivalent of like a light guy, like doing 6.8 or something stupid. Because obviously when you're heavier, you do more watts to go faster. So team and Aaronsman, one minute 23 ahead of everyone else. But you can see Lopez and Mass looked really strong today. And Roglic and O'Connor looked good. Uh, Jai Hindley, a good ride from him as well. Juan Ayuso, Louis Mankies, Remco held on a lot but then obviously like lost some time gcy is like you know he, he's good um he's you know he's secured in my opinion i don't really think unless it's a raid situation one minute 34 is decent mass has had a super super uh welter which i'm really happy for movistar because hopefully they won't get relegated because we love to see movistar on the world tour juan ayuso decent performance leapfrog carlos Rodriguez, lopez again and um, Ben O'Connor into the top 10, which is good. I, I really like Ben O'Connor. He seems like a good bloke on Tristan Tate uh, videos, vlogs, uh, which are always entertaining. Would would definitely recommend watching them. So anyway, today you see like 320 normalized, so decent. Um, it was a pretty like flat affair, you know, 270 normalized. Nothing like easy, easy, but no, not too rough. Here's like 20 minutes at 5.6 watts per kilo. So again, like decent numbers, to be honest, like actually... I would say more than decent. I'd say like pretty, pretty impressive, to be honest. They went that hard that on that climb. Five watts per kilo on this climb. Um, and then we just go from the base. Like it is a long climb. It's steeper. You can sort of see from Strava, but it's steeper at the bottom and then more, a lot more flat at the top. 5.4 watts per kilo for an hour. Again, like the thing is that sounds way less than yesterday, but obviously they're going to altitude, so they've got to be careful of that. Um, and a lot of people were pacing, but you can see here it's like 5.7 really on the actually on the on the first part i guess you know in a uh, yumbo set a really hard tempo then you can see there's like this sort of intermediate part where it really soft taps obviously he's on the wheel you know like 5.6 percent 25k an hour you're like okay that's pretty quick but i can guarantee you if you did 5.1 must be kilo on 5.6 percent you wouldn't go 25k an hour but that's just the drafting obviously like you know when you're in the wheel you get fat fat draft so that's why the numbers are just a lot less on that and if you actually look at the last part they actually did like really high numbers. I mean, if you look where this starts, this starts, if you look on the right hand corner, um, it's 2,250 meters is where this last 5k is. 
and goes up to the very top, it says here is 2,426. So this is well above 2,000. If we sort of go the whole climbing performance above 2,000 meters, 5.3 for 18, very impressive. But you can see when the attacks really started flowing, six watts per kilo for four minutes, and look at altitude, 2,400 meters. That is very, very high level from Ben O'Connor. Like that is, that is really impressive. Maybe not too surprising um, because, you know, he lives in Andorra. So, you know, he's obviously used to it. I'm not sure necessarily if he lives at altitude. I assume he probably spends time there. I think he was doing an altitude tech camp actually in one of those videos that Tristan Tate did. So you'd expect him to be used to it. Obviously, he's climbing up to 2,300, 2,600 um, in Andorra. I think they have um, regularly. But you can see this is this is a, a crude estimate of sea power, uh, what it would be in at sea, which is 454. And if you look at the whole thing, like, to be fair, it doesn't, only seems to do, like, some of it. It doesn't do all of it, like, the sea power stuff. So maybe it's only when it's exclusive over 2,000 meters. I'm not really sure. But that is there. So I'm not sure. Maybe it's just on the smaller ones when there's not normalized power. I don't, I don't really know. But anyway, very impressive performance from him. Um, ben O'Connor looks really, really good. Um, and the question is, like, I guess then will Remco lose more time? Like, not really. Like, I, w I went through some of the stages before. Like, you sort of got um, 16, which is like... Um, oh, no, sorry, my internet's not fast enough. It's not going to load. Sorry, it's very sad, actually. Um, but yeah, like, they're hard, but they're not crazy hard. So I think in conclusion, Tao had a shocker. Wow, that's, that's rough. 29 minutes down. He's really out of the GC now. Ineos having a bit of a, a rubbish welter for the GC. Um, obviously won two stages, but for Ineos, that's that's not good enough. You've got to be, you've got to be top, especially with this over this field. Like you've got to be top three in it, in my opinion. Um, but anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you enjoyed this uh, video, and I'll see you in the next one.